Well, organizations that want to do marketing used to do marketing by interrupting people. They used to do it by yelling at people who didn't want to hear from them about stuff they didn't want to hear about. And they figured if they just yelled at enough people often enough, they'd make enough money to earn it back. Small businesses wrestled with this because small businesses don't have enough money to yell at everyone. Well, the world has changed pretty dramatically. We have discovered that people don't pay attention to ads, they skip the ads, they don't respond to the ads, they don't remember the ads. But what the internet is doing is making it easier to follow people you want to follow, to connect to people you want to connect to. So the future of marketing, it turns out, is leadership. That if you do something that people want to follow, if you connect people to people they want to be connected to, they'll join a tribe, a group of people interested in accomplishing something. And if you can lead a tribe, then the marketing will take care of itself. Small businesses have a lot of advantages here. The biggest one is they're run by human beings, whereas big businesses are often run by committees. People don't want to follow a committee. They want to follow a person. And you must be genuine and authentic in order to connect these people. And you have to care or else they're going to set, tell that you, you're not. So some big companies can certainly do it. Individuals can certainly do it. Oprah in the United States does it all the time. A company like Apple, which is the third most valuable company in America right now, just past Walmart, does it because Steve Jobs appears to be a human being, because their products appear to be designed by people for people. When you carry around your iPhone or I don't know where mine is or whatever, it's a symbol to the other people in the tribe. Mm. And so this process does work. It works for big companies and for small ones. The beauty for small companies is that tribes don't have to be very big to be effective. If you have a thousand true fans, a thousand people who will drive across the country to see you perform, a thousand people who will tell their friends, that's enough to make an impact. Well, the most important thing to do is to be a person, is to make a product that someone should buy because they want to, not because you pushed it on them, to tell the truth, to be authentic, to be a human being and connecting with people. The other thing you need to do is figure out that not everyone wants to be in your tribe. And one of the most difficult things to do as a small business person is say, you're not it, you're not it, you can't do this. Because we want everyone to be our customer. But tribes, all of them, succeed because there's outsiders. You can't have insiders if you don't have outsiders. There's a, a coffee bar in London called Proof Rock, and uh, one of the things that he does is, instead of having a frequent buyer card, where if you buy eight cups of coffee you get a free one, he gives you one where if you buy eight cups of coffee from his competitors, and he lists them all, he'll give you a free one. Well, why would you do that? You do that because you're talking to a very specific sort of person, a cosmopolitan, urbane person that gets that you're winking, that understands that they're part of the coffee tribe, that acknowledges the fact that you care enough about coffee and coffee drinkers that you would send people to your competition. That act by a small company changes the landscape. Starbucks can't beat them at that game. Well, there's good news and bad news. The bad news is most marketers are using social networks as a new way to spam people. They're using social networks as a new media channel to yell about what they do. That doesn't work. But on the other hand, there's a whole breed of company coming along that's realizing that if you can build a social network on Ning or some site like that, or if you can just create an email relationship with people, or that you can uh, move people through this electronic medium so they can connect with each other, then you're halfway to building a tribe. Well, I think you should decide. It doesn't matter necessarily how you decide, but you should decide. You should pick. You can't do all of them. The reason I'm not on Twitter is I already picked. I have a blog. I need to take care of it. I need to focus on it. I answer hundreds of emails every day. If I added Twitter to the mix, I would be bad at the other two things. So you need to focus. You need to say, this is the thing I'm going to do. Now, there are companies that use Twitter quite effectively. And if you can be one of them in the way you tell your story, in the kind of people you interact with, then go do that. But don't do it just because everyone else is doing it. That's a silly reason. Well, unfortunately, small businesses have been brainwashed into thinking they should fit in. They should just be like big businesses, but smaller. They should be like their competitors, but in a different neighborhood. And that's just not working anymore. 
And so I guess the real question that I would ask people is, if you went out of business, who would miss you? And if the answer is only the people ought to walk three more stores to get to the dry cleaner, that's not a good answer. The idea of being missed, of being an important part of someone's day or someone's business or someone's life, isn't easy to accomplish. And you're not going to accomplish it just by making what the big companies make but a couple pence cheaper. You're going to accomplish it because you touch people, because you're generous, because you make change, because there's something about what you do and how you do it that people viscerally connect with. And if you can't do that, then you're going to be struggling for years. But if you can do it, you're going to discover there's a line out your door. There's a line of people who want to be touched by you, who want to be connected, because that's a basic human need. It's a great question. You start with, you don't have to be in any business if you don't want to. So just because the world is lined up to not help you, doesn't mean you get to whine about it, just do something else. So if you insist on being price-driven, commodity supplier to businesses that don't want to talk about you, well then don't expect to grow, right? That, that's all there is to it. What we know is if you can change that equation, you can grow. How can you get people to talk about you? Well, for example, let's say you're a plumbing supply house in uh, a, a small suburb or a rural area or even a city. Why not invite all the plumbers, the ones who never get to talk to each other over a beer, together once a month to a party just to talk to other plumbers? Now, you don't have to say, talk about my widgets or talk about my faucets. Just talk. Now, if all the plumbers come together once a month to meet each other and trade stories and hang out, don't you think they're going to want you to be part of that conversation? Don't you think you become irreplaceable in the extent that you are the host of all these plumbers? Instead of saying, I have the cheapest faucets, what you need to say is, I have the coolest plumbers, come here, you get invited to, the other, to, to meet your peers. So there's all these opportunities to unlock conversation, but no one is going to talk about your boring products for boring people. If that's what you insist on, then be prepared to be invisible.